Live from the Balls Visual Radio Studios, this is the Blades on Ball Show. And now, here's your host, the voice of South African rugby himself, Hugh Bladen. Hugh, it's over to you. Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Glory days. I've got somebody with me who's had many a glory day. Um, my great mate Sid Namus. Hi, Siddy. Hello, Blazy. It's great to have you here again. Good to be with you. Um, glory days. 25 test matches Sydney played consecutively. If you don't know about the past, you won't understand the present or build a plan for the future. Sydney, 25 consecutive tests. How many did you lose? Four. Um, yeah, four we lost and uh, drew, drew, I think it was four or five, Yui. As many as that? Yeah. Not four. Yes. No. Oh, you know better. I mean, That's quite a lot. <laughs> but I mean, I think you, you can remember that you lost four. Yes. Out of the 25 Ter- tests. Ter- Not a bad record. Great to see you here, Sydney. You've just been to Cape Town to get a new leg? Yes, I did. And uh, oh, I'd like to say I'm very happy with it. It's a, a whole new thing for me. I feel secure. I can walk on it. And and um, getting better and better every day. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, it's got a computer in it. Well, it's like a computer. Yeah, it's, um, well, I don't know what the right word is, but it stops you falling. And if you fall, you've got time to correct yourself. It's um, I'm not quite the right a, a word. A balancer. Well, it's like a little... A ballast. <laughs> it's a nice try, Blaze, but it will come to me just now. But anyway, it's, a, it's an incredible thing, and it's uh, unreal what you can get for uh, half a million these days. It's I mean, incredible. By a motor car, yeah. yeah. I've got the same as Natalie, funny enough, and been talking to Natalie, and she sort of helped me make Natalie a decision. Natalie Detroit. Yes, that that's is. Yeah. quite right, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. And when know. I spoke to her, she said she was going to do the Argus, pick and pay Argus, which she did. And she finished it, which is incredible. Remarkable. So mm. it just shows you what uh, these physical setbacks, how they can be overcome with, with determination, with attitude. Well, attitude, your attitude is There's a so will, there's a way, Bladesy. Yeah, and no, right, no doubt. That's yeah. Absolutely. Jacques Grisel, we were talking earlier about uh, getting a super brew right and getting the predictions right, because I don't think a lot of guys did, did it and... Uh, we had uh, somebody say, uh, tweet, twittering, tweeting. <laughs> Still haven't got that right. <laughs> I'm gonna put a tweeting, Blades, come. <laughs> tweeting. thing in capital letters. Tweet, saying tweet. T-W-E-E-T. I've got it, yeah. We had these tweets. Thank you for your tweets. Jacques Riesel, well done, Jacques Riesel. He got his predictions absolutely correct. Wasn't it great to hear Dan Retief? I mean, his his... Ability to analyse rugby, Sydney. You were praising him. Yes, I, I was actually wanted to try and get a word in there just to tell him I admire his knowledge of the game of rugby. I think Dan's knowledge is unbelievable, and I also wanted to chip in when he was making comparisons with our, the Springboks and the All Blacks. Um, the the word that I would have used is support play. Uh. They have the most incredible support play. That uh, I mean, you can just look ahead and just pass it left and someone's there or right and someone's well, there. Well, Dan made that point, actually. Yeah, uh, the, but, the but he used another word and it's just, it's actually support play, Blades, and um, we just don't do it. Yeah, he, he talked about the supporters um, analyzing, well, no, the supporters expecting to get the ball. That was the point he made. And they was, are. Mm. They're there with open arms waiting because they know something's going to happen. And you look in the offloads, like you're, you're, you're saying, it's not an offload, it's a pass. Ah, you know, ah. correct. But, you know, I mean, Sydney, I don't like to be a win we and we're going to, we'll talk a little bit about your, I want to talk a little bit about some of the great players you played against and, and you know, in the various positions of the great players you played with. But now you do remember that I played fly half and sometimes you played centre and sometimes you played wing. I'm not a great win. We, what did you, when you got the ball, what did you hear? Well, it had to go to the wing from a loose scrum. When you were the wing, then inside. There was a certain th- person who used to shout, inside. <laughs> 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 and I did that once, and uh, I think it was Mickey Gerber who passed it to me, and it was just a hospital pass that <laughs> didn't nearly carry me off. But, Blaze, you were there, because once you pass the ball, that's when your work starts. Yeah. And you were there all the time, and I loved enjoyed playing with you. I think that, that's, the, the, and, you know, I don't want to get 
uh, go on and on and on about it. But I think, what do you think about the, the Sharks? I want to hear from shark supporters who are going to say, hold on a second, the Sharks did very well. You know the Sharks? I, in fact, y yesterday at, at Port Elizabeth Airport, I, I think it's now called the Brown Fisher Airport, interestingly enough. Um, no, 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 don't. Before you all shout at me, it's the Bloemfontein Airport that is now the Brown Fisher Airport. And um, one, of the, one of the guys who's involved in television said, professional rugby, the aim of the game is to win and make profits. And I said, whoa, 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 hold on. The aim of the game is to carry the ball over the opposition's goal line. <laughs> to score tries, yes. That yeah. is the aim of the game. No doubt. You know, results are to win and, and, and make profits in, in the professional era. But, but let's not lose fact of the game. And I, I often uh, speak to youngsters. If I speak to them collectively, I say, what is the aim of the game? And I say, to tackle, to win, to... To, to do this, that, that, the aim of the game is to score tries. Is to carry the ball over, over the, the opposition. And that's how on. you win. And that's yeah. in the change room. You'll feel totally satisfied that you've won that game. And by how do you do it? By scoring tries. That's the aim, 100%, yeah. Yui. Sydney, we, we saw, we were at, at Dr. Louis Late's memorial service at the Santon Sun on the same day that we saw one of the, your particular teammates, one of my teammates for the Transvaal side, Pete Hreilang, and we heard on the same day that Jan oh, Ellis had passed away. Mm. I mean, who were the, some of the, the great players you played with? Well, well you've just mentioned two. I mean, they were great. Uh, you know, they were just... Uh, uh, Pete Hreilang was known as the king of the underworld because he was always first there. He was the fetcher and, and the last man to stand up <laughs> was always Pete Hreilang and with stud marks and you could do it in those days you could drop on a man <laughs> it's just no problem and you'd see me trailing in the change room with just full his back was full of stud marks Jan Ellis with his one hand I was, funny enough I was watching South Africa Barbarians game last night um, I recorded and I was just going through recordings what game? Uh, 1960, 1970 when I was what? played against the, bar, um, the Barbarians Barbars, Barbars, yeah, yeah, at Twickenham the old uh, Twickenham uh. And that try that John Ellis scored, I mean, he had um, not David Duck, um, uh, Gibson going all. I mean, Mike Gibson didn't know what was happening, but that was John Ellis, Frick de Pri I played with. I was fortunate, Blaze, that I, when I was under 19, I had four heroes in my life, and that was Martin Pelser, Frick de Pri, Moff Mayberg, and Monique Rue. And I was fortunate enough to play Test Match Rugby with three of those heroes of mine, Martin Pelser, I slipped up with. But, um, you know, I can go through uh, Hannes Maria. Yeah, Hannes Maria. You know, just all Geis of them. Pitzer. Oh, tell Geis, if you want something to be sorted out on the field, say for Geis. You know, Geis was sorted <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, very fortunate to have played in that era. In fact, in 1968, you were playing centre against the British Lions. Yes. And Geis, you scored a try from a Geis Pitzer cross kick. That's quite right. And uh. I thanked him. I said that's the best cross kick I've ever seen, or you know, in my life. Hooker, a hook, cro a hooker, cross kicking. And Chay said to me, "Don't be silly. I was supposed to kick it into touch." <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, that is my first test try. Yeah. Mm. Your first test try. Yes, against the British Lions. My first three tests were centre. It was rumoured that you know the Davy de Villiers, Davy de Villiers, who studied theology at Stellenbosch University and then became a Germany in in the Burland. I think it was Wellington. Mm. Um, and then came up to lecture at, at RAU and then and then was persuaded to stand for parliament in the in the Melville area, I think it was, Melville West Dean yes. around about yes. where UJ is at the moment. And you know, people used to say that Darby de Villiers would, would get the guys together and pray before the game. Did that ever happen? It happened once. Once, um, I'm not going to mention the test match, but it wasn't turned out to be one of the the worst test matches. But only, only once. But what I loved about Darby, he respected my religion. He came up to me in the bus on the way to the ground, and you know, do I mind, do I mind if he says a prayer? He respected my religion, which I just you know I thought he, that was great. He knew more about Judaism than me because he, <laughs> <laughs> he had to study it. Yeah, and he yeah. really did, and mm. it was incredible that uh, you know what he knew about it. 
Well, I can say, you know, I mean, I, I had the great privilege of playing that whole season in 1970 when Darby came up to the Transvaal, mm. and he was m my scrum half. And Darby, yes, he used to go off quietly into the corner of the change room and bow his head and have his own little uh, moments of silence, and I think a lot of us did. His own little yeah. m moment of silence with, with probably, w in Darby's case, it w with a little prayer and that sort of thing. Oh, well, it happens today as well, Hugh. You yeah, uh, God, and, yeah. you know, the guy would say a, a prayer afterwards. Mm. Not oh, thanks, yeah. thank the Lord for winning or thank the Lord for... It was thanking the Lord for the, for the talent and thanking the Lord. I don't want to get into a religious no. program here. Yeah. But thanking the Lord for, for you know, for the no serious well, injuries swap, you know, and that type that of things. 1995 World Cup, they all got together and they, yeah, yeah. that was brilliant. Loved yeah, it. absolutely. Um, yeah, Eckhart, we've had a, a tweet from Eckhart Fredericks, who got five right. Well done, Eckhart. I hope you're near global honesty on your knee. Because you got the, no, no, but he got the Blues Bulls. Prediction incorrect. Okay. And we mm. just, uh, that was a good win for the Bulls, I think. It was great. Eh? Well, all our teams did well. Yeah, we did. And uh, Lionel Bastos has been in. Ryan Miller has been uh, in getting involved. And Bradley. No, I don't think we'll be we're playing well. But we at least winning. So imagine if we do play well. The Sharks. Well done, Bradley. I know, you're right. Uh, they have. They're, at least they are winning. Three wins out of three. They're looking, the, I mean, they're a bit short on bro bonus points. And I wanted to talk about Jake White in a moment because they haven't the Brumbies done incredibly well. And the Brumby Sharks on the next week. Next week. Mm. On Saturday, next Saturday, that should be one of the humdinger games of the weekend. The Brumbies against the Sharks and the Brumbies on top of the entire log. Mm. And one's got to say, Jake, that is, is, you know, well, amazing. Last year, he also did well with them. They were just unfortunate. I can't recall exactly why, but they, their conference, I think they were top of their conferences. But they didn't make the final. I can't remember the exact uh, uh, why they didn't. Eh? Yeah. But he has done, uh, I mean, he's done a good job. Oh, no doubt. He also, he's done a good job in getting Clyde Rathbone and, and Smith back to in, yeah, into yeah. the playing yeah. ranks. And Smith was there. Eh? You know, the Brumbies are, are a strong oh. outfit. I know Stephen Larkham's dad, you know, is, is on the board of the Brumbies. And they've got the G George Gregan. I always thought that George Gregan was a stroppy little sh uh, guy. <laughs> careful. <laughs> careful. <laughs> careful. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's amazing how you, you build up concepts of people and that sort of thing. And, Sydney, you were there. We had lunch, uh, oh, dinner at, at Gavin, Gavin Verigi's uh, yes, place. Yes, I was just going to say, that's quite right. I'd, I always thought, you know, I'd, I'd met Justin Marshall on a couple of occasions and, and, jo and Justin Marshall were really nice guy. But George Gregan, what a champion bloke. Yeah, great. Really, he was charming. Was he was absolutely mm. fantastic. And you build up these concepts of people. And, I mean, I was blown away. He was so friendly. And, well, look and how charming you are after you retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at you, a <laughs> couple of them, and those are great. Eh? <laughs> I want to may I ask you a question, Blaze? You know, also your knowledge of rugby, I, I love it. And did you see Cruden with that little grubber kick through? No, you didn't. Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, I, 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 it I, was just brilliant. Yeah. They scored a try from it. Dan referred to grubber kicks, and, uh, and, and oh, the, did he? Yeah. I missed that. Yeah, but that is my thinking now that we don't use that little grubber enough. Oh. Uh, the new boy at the Lions, Lionel, Lionel yeah. Cronier. Cronier. You know, he's got the, he's kicking over the head, and yeah. sometimes it bounces back and bounces correctly. But that grubber kick, they got to bend down to pick it up first of all. And I think it's it's a and great it can attack. bounce anywhere. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we just don't use it enough in all our teams. Eh? Mm. Yeah. So I want to know your opinion. No, well, I, you know, I think I. <laughs> I'm a great advocate of, of moving the ball into space. And if you put in a grubber kick through, that is an attacking kick that you put in through. And at least three guys have got to be running onto it. Because the first guy may take a hack at it and it bounces the wrong way. The next guy is up there and the third guy is up in support. If somebody happens to pick it up or something like that. Or the second guy hacks it further ahead. The third guy is, becomes the chaser. 
So in every, almost every situation, you've got to have three guys running after the ball, you know, and 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 playing the ball as Dan was was begging for. Well, Cruden's so, little grubber was, hmm. I think, ten meters from the the, the, the try line goal line. No, right, and he just kicked it just in, into the in goal area. And it, yeah, okay, it, yeah. Uh, it bounced beautifully and try, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, another way of, of breaching a line of defense because a lot of That's people it. say. Yes. And the other thing is, you know, the fullbacks stand, tend to stand a little bit deeper. And um, so you, mm. you do have these opportunities to uh, variation. I think variation is a, Thank you. is a great thing. I love that. Yeah. Just plain Darren. Are you looking for tweets, Blagy? Yeah, Lionel Bastos. I'm looking for tweets, <laughs> and tweets are coming. Sign of a we've had that. Ryan no. Miller, <laughs> still win. <laughs> Attack will come right. Too much talent not to. Well, we'll have to look at that in the Brumbies game because Jake White, known for his brilliant defensive organisation, John Plumtree as well. John Plumtree, I think you know he has got to change his game plan a little bit. But then you rely. You know you've got a game plan. You've got uh, uh, Springboks in, in, you know, Sean McLeod came on. I thought he made a bit of a difference. And I'm not saying like Kubis Reinach is not a, a great talent and a good player. It's just Charles seems to give that just a little bit of extra oomph Always around the place. That. Yeah. You know, then you've got a center, you you know, with, with Franz Stein and you've got your Don, Again? your okay. Don so quick. And Vovo so quick. J.P. Peterson, strong and quick. You know, they've got so much uh, going around. Louis Ludic. Uh, great players. Great, uh, you mentioned one name there, Blaze, and again, I'm going to uh, just indulge in your uh, genius. And that is, tell me, Franz Stein, I'm sorry, but he isn't doing nothing at this point in time. He, he, has not, he does not pass the ball. Ryan Kon Kankowski oh. does not pass the ball. And this is something that was, has been discussed over and over about our rugby. And I'm sorry, Fronstein got caught every time in possession, Bladesy. And, uh, you, you know, he just, it's just his size, but he's not doing anything at this point. I, I, I'd put him full back. Yeah, well, you know, I would be just, just inclined in a way to, to make major changes. I, I, I tend to agree with the too much talent not to uh, opinion. And I think it's great. Uh, you know, jo uh, you, I'm, I'm a, a great advocate of keeping the same team if you if if you if you're winning games. There's no reason to change. Now, Sir John Kerwin, I mean, change six players from the blue side to play. Is that? Do you think he was overconfident, or he said he wanted to give younger guys an opportunity to? You know, I know we're jumping around a bit, but. There are only so many games in this competition. I know it's quite a long competition, but when you go and look at the soccer situation and you look at some of the other, other, other things, you know, you can't lose too many games and, you, and you're out. So uh, I say, and you lose a home game that you're expected to win, the Blues against the, the Blues. Bulls, Jeez. and now he's made six changes. He could come in for some criticism. I must be honest, I made the Blues a good thing to, to win that game. I really did because I thought well, they were playing. Particularly after they'd played the week before against the Crusaders. Yeah, yeah. Next week we've got uh, the Waratahs against the Cheetahs and I think that is going to give people a very good idea of where the Brumbies are at. Because the Brumbies, who would have said, I mean, w okay, get the fact that the Brumbies are going to beat the Waratahs in Canberra, but who would have said the Brumbies would have stuck 36 points against the Waratahs? Mm. I vow, doubt whether too many Super Brew contenders would have got the spreadsheet right there. No, definitely not. Okay, are we going to? Uh, we, we, uh, I'm, I'm interested in in Keith Urban. Is it Urban or Keith Urban or Keith Urban? That guy. I mean, multi tattooed. He is Nicole's husband, Nicole Kidman. Remember, she was married to Tom Cruise. And oh, uh, I'm impressed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's such a cool dude. I love American <laughs> Idols. And uh, Keith Urban is such a cool dude about Chris. Let's see if he can sing.
uh, gives standing ovations, and no wonder he likes the ballad sort of music, because uh, obviously he's a balladeer of note. Thanks, guys. Gary Late, Sid Namus has got a point. The grub of the Rolls Royce used to use that. Gary, I know, has uh, tw tweeted us on... on <laughs> Gary, thanks, on but you know you're <laughs> Sean Pillay, Sean, you, I don't know whether you're listening to, to Dan. I know three wins out of three and the points are what counts. I, you know, I think when, when you're looking at, at 80% of the possession in the first 20 minutes of the game and ultimately about 61% of overall possession in the game against the Southern Kings, you're looking at a situation if, if the Sharks are going to be championship contenders, uh, in my opinion, I think they need to produce a little bit more. But you have a point, you know, Uwem Boy Low. <laughs> Sydney, <laughs> Sydney... Um, he was my manager at one stage. Sydney <laughs> was, uh, yeah, under the management of Boy Low. I think yeah. the a, a tour of England... When, when no, no, uh, mm. Transvaal. He was the manager of a Transvaal team. But Boy Low was? Yes. Are you sure? 100%. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, no, no, he was the selector of the Springboks. He was the selector of the Springboks. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Boylo went to New Zealand. I'm thinking of Jan Lotz. Yeah, Boylo went to New Zealand into a chemist shop and said, could I have a, a piece of soap? And the <laughs> assistant said, do you want it scented? And he said, no, someone just take it with me now. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Good old story. Okay, yeah. Tish Peters, great. Tish, l l Tish says that the Sharks are now playing how the Stormers played last year. Bit one dimensional sort of thing. And then she needs Keegan the Fearless must come back. So it's great to see that Keegan Daniel has a fan in, in Tish Peters and also Timothy Foxcroft. Where's Timothy's? The Sharks are playing well, yeah. Timothy says so. Yeah, Timothy Foxcroft. There's to me the sharks are playing well. They're just not making the right decisions at the right situations, but the tries will come. Yeah, yeah, to me. Well, let's have a look at that, yeah. But thanks, guys, for your. We haven't had any Stormers uh, uh, tweets this morning. We normally get quite a few Stormers fans coming on to our, our show. Great to see that they. I thought the Chiefs might take the Stormers because. The, uh, the Chiefs are playing fantastic attacking rugby, but the Storm is running into that, that big lead, and then suddenly the Chiefs coming back at them. Well, with that, that's the Chiefs, and they, oh. they, they counterplay. The way uh, they counterattack is brilliant, and we don't do that. We just get a kick. The Chiefs counterattack, and I don't know why we can't learn from this. It works for them most of the times, and it's brilliant. They gain ground, they, they keep possession. And uh, we just kick up and unders and hopefully, you know, we'll get there before them or whatever, or they'll knock on. And I just love the way the Chiefs play rugby. I love the way the uh, people from New Zealand play rugby. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, they do. Dan, was, Dan did make the point, though, that, you know, when he hears people saying the New Zealanders are playing great rugby and we aren't, and he tends to get a little bit annoyed with that. And, you know, our results against the All Blacks are not particularly good. Used to be uh, at over, State. over the years. In 1992, we came back into World Rugby. I think we had beaten them one more time than they had Correct. beaten us. Yes. Now, since 1992, we've played them about 48 times and won about 14, which Mate. isn't a great record, unfortunately. They're well ahead of us, yeah. They are well ahead of us. Some of those great all black players you played against? Well, Pine Brian Tree. Brian side. Colin Meads. Pine Tree. Pine Tree came to South Africa in 1970. And he broke his arm Yes. against Eastern Transvaal. Somebody Correct. stood on his arm. You know who it was, don't you? The no. blonde-haired lock. Um, uh, was it Skip Henderson? That's it. Thank you. That's Skip. why I love Bladen. I can go anywhere with him. And <laughs> <laughs> that's everything. <laughs> Skip, yeah, Skip Henderson yeah. he ended up as a, as a, a, a the head of the inspectors of teaching. Yeah, I saw Skip Henderson stood on his arm. So mm. anyway, Pine Tree broke his arm. And then, not to be, I think he missed a game or two. In fact, he missed the game against Transvaal because we didn't play against him. We played against his brother, Stan. Yes. And, uh, but not to be outdone, no, Colin Meads just put his uh, arm in a leather cast. That's it. And played uh, a couple of tests with a broken arm. In the third and fourth test, yeah. He Tough did. guy, Brian oh. Lahore. Great eighth man, good captain, captain of the Unsmiling Giants. They went, they. Unsmiling for long. 
<laughs> we, we made them. No, they were. Who was the best wing you ever played against? Ron Williams. I you see that without hesitation. Without, no doubt in my, not, in my mind. He was uh. brilliant. And, you know, it even goes far as to say that, that you know, look at John Olomo. Yeah, he's great. And he ran, just ran over people. When Brian Williams sidestepped you, you had no chance. Eh? I don't care who you are, but when he went inside you, it was like a meter sidestep, huge. The and other thing was, he, you know, he was quick and he had huge thighs. Oh, I became very friendly with him. He came to my house and it was so great. And then he invited me, reciprocated, invited me and my son, Gary, to the hotel where they stayed at the sunny side. And every single one of those Samoans uh, were here for the World Cup. Every single one had these massive thighs. And I asked Brian why, and he said, look, it's just the gene they have there. Hey? I mean, they all got huge, massive thighs. And uh, like I said, we turned out, we, great mates, great mates. And, and yeah, he gave us... Yeah, and also, I mean, Ian Kirkpatrick was a, oh, was a, a flank. flanker who, yeah. was a, who was a brilliant player. Blaise, they had won 17 on the trot, eh? They held the record at that stage. And uh, first test at Loftus, um, the unsmiling giants, they were going for 18 wins. In a row. Uh, after in Falken, um, Very good. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the English for it? In a consecutively. Consecutively, yeah. They hadn't lost. And when we beat them, uh, I think it was 17-12. Oh, God, that was one of the greatest days. Or oh, highlights of my rugby was beating the All Blacks in that first test at Loftus. I saw Andre Watson the other day, and we were talking about uh, referees, and, and I spoke to Andre in my program a fortnight ago. Um, very, con he's such a convivial gentleman, and um, you know, he, I was I was making a plea. Let's not criticise referees, and let's get off their backs. And you know, Andre made the point that car tires have been slashed, and and the wow. and, and school uh, parents threatening referees and that type of thing, oh. which I think is is right. frankly it's it's despicable. It is, I agree. But uh, I mean, on your sixty nine seventy tour. Uh, I mean, you played against Ireland. You played about seven minutes extra time. Well, apparently, it was ten minutes, and then as soon as <laughs> Kernan got that kick over to draw eight all, the ref blew his whistle. So it was a draw. Yeah. And then, I mean, Scotland wasn't great either. No, that was, that's we lost six three. I mean, yeah, you know, it was actually quite a freaky tour. There was uh, a lot of unhappiness on that tour. Well, you, you know, because all the demonstrations and that, and the wor one of the worst was where uh, Darby tucks the ball down against England. And the ref gave uh, Pullen, uh, John Pullen, John Pullen uh. the try. It wasn't. It wasn't a try. I mean, that was cheating. And and me against France. And the ref apologised to me. Um, in when I scored that crawling try, but I scored another try before that. Uh. And the ref ruled that I was over the dead ball line, and it was nowhere near. And he apologised. That was in 1968, 69. We were back in England because of that um, British Isles tour. And he came, the Aussie was his name, the Irishman, mm -hmm. and apologized that he had watched it. And yes, he made a mistake. Yeah. Well, there's a, so that, you know, there is this point. There is a point for television and for the, they're not now touch judges or linesmen. They are now Assistant. referees' assistants. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was a situation in 1974 where the referee Max Bays awarded a try to Roger Utley and it had been, the ball had been dotted down by Chris Pope and and Max Bays uh, admitted that he had made a mistake mm. and that uh, he had been unsighted so as he was running around this and he was quite a shortish fellow Max Bays and as he was running around the forwards to get a sight Chris Pope dotted the ball down stood back and w what Max Bays saw was uh, Roger Utley yes running around and diving on the ball and so he awarded the try. Now, if they had the use of uh, referees' assistance in those days, uh, you know, it, there's no way that would have been a try. Or, or the TMO factor. Are you in favour of technology today? Yeah, right? very much yeah, so. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm very much in favour of technology. You know, I, I just hope they don't, you know, take too much advantage of it. Where, um, I don't know, the, the refs are relying too much on it now. I mean, even when there's a certain try, you can see everybody, and the linesman's even giving him the thumbs up a try. Yeah. They still go to the TMO. Yeah. 
and well I, you know supposing in a way you ha you have the technology so why not we use it? it and we've seen it on one or two occasions where the umpire or the referee has uh, said no i don't need the technology and has been proved to be wrong mm -hmm. and that i think is is good i'm not too sure about this fact of them going back a couple of moves to see whether there was dirty play or an infringement or something Forward like that i'm not i'm yeah. not too sure about that but Certainly, you know, the, the touchdown, the, the corner flag situation, mm. yeah, that, that type yeah. of thing, I, yeah. think, uh, I think is great. Last and year, in cricket, uh, I think it's great. Brilliant. I was a little bit worried. Maybe somebody, had, let's just talk, because we're not only rugby uh, mad. We, we, I'm all sports I'm all mad. sports and, as well. And, you know, I, I thought that they did uh, Rory Kleinfeld a little bit of an injustice yesterday where... He, you know, the, the batsman hit the ball back at him and yes. he got a finger to it. Yes. And then the ball clattered into the stumps. Yes. And he celebrated and appealed. And I cannot believe that if he hadn't touched that ball, he would have reacted as he did mm. in that situation. I, I don't believe that, that Rory, you know... But his excitement was ...would have right, tried yeah. to con the umpires into thinking that was out. I mean, I think his excitement was so spontaneous yeah. Yeah. and that sort of thing. And, and so, you know, you get to this point where we, we talk, one talks about the spirit of the game and is, is technology uh, killing the spirit of the game or are people just saying, oh, well, we will rely on technology to make us honest? Well, it's happening. Uh, uh, yeah. Last season... A uh, Lydic try would have been a uh, would have been a try. It's uh, it would have been a try because they weren't allowed to look at forward passes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, look, I'm all for technology as well. They must bring it into soccer now, please. We all sports. Let's talk about the ball that crosses the line and the referee doesn't give a goal. So they have got to bring it into soccer as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I can't believe that they don't have it in soccer. Mm. I mean, the whole World Cup in soccer, I mean, England scored a goal. Yeah. Yes. I mean, quite clearly, clearly the ball landed over the line. And yes, that, that def affected England's entire campaign. So I, I can't understand why, why soccer don't, don't use it. it. It's also... I love the, the fact that I go to the gym and guys talk about soccer teams. And, you know, there might be a West Ham supporter. I know one guy who's a West Ham supporter because his mum, his mum was born in West Ham. And, uh, you know, but you get other guys that are born in, in Brackpan and then they talk about their team as we. We, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Man United or the Arsenal supporters and they say we you know, didn't do this or it's a pity so-and-so was injured. And it's, it's fantastic to see how people get so caught up in this whole situation oh, yeah. of, of, of supporting teams. Oh, yes. I can understand a guy who's born in Durban saying we, you know, we're referring to the Sharks or, or I know that a lot of the Stormers guys, so many guys in fact support a, a team because their father did and that type of thing. Definitely. You're influenced by, by your Definitely. parents. Oh, yes. But when a guy, you know, you're born, I say, in Germiston or something, I don't know, you're born in Johannesburg and Lazy. he's talking about You're Arsenal a lion supporter. Well. I'm a what? Lions. I'm a lion. No, with lions not in the Super 15, may I ask you a question? I know it's yeah. your show. <laughs> can, can I, who's your second team? Who do you support? I don't down? have a second team. Okay, so no, okay. I, you know, it's, it's strange because I do, uh, because of the, my residential situation in Johannesburg and because the Bulls play, obviously, in Pretoria and I am the sort of English-speaking guy who calls games in Johannesburg and Pretoria. I do a lot of Bulls games. Mm. And when the Bulls were doing, were doing very well and drawing huge crowds and working towards being the champions. Mm. I went there every Saturday and there were 40,000 people, sometimes 45,000 people. I actually got a, 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 an SMS from Eardwell Fanada. Eardwell Fanada was a... Oh, a, the radio a, man. Yeah, the yes. cricket and rugby commentator on yeah. radio. And his, his SMS read, Pas op je klink soos a bulls, je begin om te klink soos a bulls supporter, mm. on a steerner. Mm. 
and uh, I, I, you know, constructive criticism, I think, is, is really great. And I sort of analyzed that, and I realized that, yes, I could be sounding like a Bulls supporter, but there I was, commentating primarily against overseas well, sides. Yeah. Bulls are doing well. You, again, you're calling the Bulls more than you're calling the opposition because they're playing with the ball and, and, and winning the game. So you, you clunk to us a Bulls. Honest, you know. But you're allowed to if they're playing overseas teams. I well, you know, I mean, the, the people can also get, can get a bit twitchy. Don't forget, we come, we're broadcasting worldwide. So one tries to, I always say, hopefully, one's calling a game as you see it. Well, I must be honest, and you're not biased. You're a, I've always told you you're a great commentator, and you don't take sides. And I'll give you 10 out of 10, my brother. <laughs> so you can buy me a whiskey later. <laughs> I like well a bongo. A bongo sent us a tweet here. Do we define playing well as scoring tries? We've seen good teams play well and lose, like the Kings. Uh, sharks not at their best. Mm -hmm. Well, I you know bongo. Thanks for your tweet. I, I'm a little. I, I'm not quite sure that the, I think the Kings defended brilliantly. They didn't get enough ball to say that the Kings. I mean the Kings. Oi, I, I can hardly think that ever in the game I thought, gee, Whiskers, the Kings are, the Kings are going to get, uh, they're going to win this game. Against and Chiefs. yet I, yes. I spoke to, to Andre Strauss after the game. And you remember the, Char the Kings got a penalty on the halfway line and Dimitri Katrakila sort of consulted with the, with the captain, I think at that stage, with Stephen Sykes. And he just thought it was slightly out of out his of range. The guys tell so, me... Yeah. S.P. Maria can kick a long way, but he's a bit like a, you know, what are the, like a cannon firing all over the, over the place. But I thought at that stage of the game, it was 18-15, no, it was 18-12. The Kings could have got up to 18-15. Yes. And yes. then the Sharks would have really been Panic. under a huge amount Panic. of pressure. Mm. Bongo, yeah, I think what we're looking for is we're looking for quality rugby. We're not looking, you know, and and we're looking for quality rugby in a situation of saying we're looking for championship type rugby, and uh, that's what 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 you know one can say. Ah, oh, you know, you're never satisfied and you're never happy and blah blah blah. But I think that's what we're looking for is is championship sort of stuff. And then we got Candace Hansen. What's Candace right. said? I can't see her. Is that Copenhagen she lives in? I can't. There you go. Not sure. Um, no. Monday's Sharks game. need to up their game. All aspects. Some players also need to lose their arrogance. Candace, thank you for your tweet. And that's great. Looking back here at Keith Ingle. Looking back each week, hopefully the form continues versus the Brumbies. Yako needs to step up and show his class. Right. Thank you, Keith. And Leo, thanks, guys, for your tweets. You're almost at the end of our program. And I want to, we're going to do, I think, before we, we have a you know, finish off with chatting to Sydney, 25 consecutive test matches for South Africa. I know I'm being repetitive, but, you know, it took a, a, as long. For, the guy who broke Sydney's, here's a question for you. Who broke Sydney's record of 25 consecutive tests for South Africa? Sydney's got his <laughs> hand up, <laughs> hands up. But we are now, I'm sure Simon is going to have some, what are we having in Mariah Carey? No, we haven't got, no, uh, no? No, no, we'll play out with Mariah Carey today. Okay. So how about a Billy, Billy Idol White Wedding? Billy Idol White Wedding. Why are we playing, that, you know, uh, Nicki Minaj and Keith Urban and, and Maria, Mariah, Mariah, Carey Mariah Carey is because they are judges on American Idols and I, I love American Idols. I cried last night. Sat on my stoop, having a lemonade with my wife, <laughs> and actually when that, that big African-American lady got up to sing, I, she finished, I was, it actually tears were running down my cheeks. But I am a you sentimental old slob. <laughs> you sure well, it, wasn't, it wasn't the lemonade? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no I don't get drunk for drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Billy Idol. <laughs> It's a nice day to start again. It's a nice Monday to start again. Three South African wins 
against overseas side. Uh, no, three, no, two, uh, three. What is it? Two. Two against overseas sides and three wins for South African sides. Obviously, the Sharks playing the Kings would have resulted in a South African win unless it had been a draw. But, yeah, a nice day to start on a Monday with those wins against the, the how I mean you're over in the years gone by Sydney we we never beat the Blues no. in in New Zealand and the, no, the, no we did we had three wins we had four wins for Wolves. South African teams the Cheetahs and the and the uh, three Stormers and the Sharks Stormers well, well, won that's, that's Sharks yeah. won four, Bulls won okay, yeah. and the Cheetahs won four wins for South African teams were almost unheard of in the old days yeah of South African teams winning in New Zealand. Very little. We well, had a, 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 a tweet from Kevin King. The Sharks, along with the Kings, have scored the lowest. Well, we're okay, we've, we've said that the Sharks still do head the South African Conference. So mm -hmm. uh, three wins out of three. And, you know, one can say, uh, check the scoreboard. I haven't had a tweet yet about how my, who broke uh, Sydney Namus's record for the number of consecutive test for South Africa but um, Sydney uh, we're winding towards the the end of our program and uh, it's, it's been great to have you and oh, always great to be here Lions the Lions over the weekend the Lions in the Vodacom well, Cup uh, unfortunately I didn't go and uh, I, I was booked to go and watch but I, I didn't get there couldn't make it but I had a great win and they did use their you know their strong team and uh, played against the Leopards but uh, I don't care. It's still a good win, and you need that confidence, and uh, they, they're doing okay. The Lions for the Vodacom Cup? Yes. <laughs> no doubt. Uh. Oh, yes. Definitely. I love it, Sydney. You <laughs> say you are. You're a Lions supporter. Very much so. Uh, I don't um, hardly miss a game. 80 games for the Lions, I think, Sydney played. I think they lost the record somewhere along the way. Yes, they did. Because it well, said yours. you played about 54 games. I think I played about 40-odd games. And they they say I played 28 exactly. games. No, I played as well in the 80s. Yeah. And over a 10-year period. That, uh, and they say I'm a, I played more in a Springbok jersey than I did in a Lions jersey. It's not possible. Yeah, not absolutely. Possible. So, so we now have it on record. Sydney Harold Nomis is a Lions supporter. And uh, he backs the Lions for the Vodacom Cup. Who are we going to back for the uh, Super Rugby? Will it be the Stormers? Will it be the Bulls? All our sides are in contention. The Stormers, the Bulls, the Sharks, they're all there. The Kings must just hang in and the whole thing. Simon says that we have to wrap up the show. Thanks for your tweets. Thanks for watching and listening. Next up is Sasha. And from Blades on Balls, it's have a great week. And here's your Mariah Carey, Blades. Uh, thank you. I forgot it's nearly. Cool. Here's my other judge, my, my third judge on American Idols, Mariah Carey with... Fantasy. Fantasy. Ciao. That was the Blades on Ball Show. Join the voice of South African rugby on your wireless next Monday for more unbelievable memories and banter. Until then, stay classy, like 20-year-old Glenn Morangi classy.